solstice eve the shortest darkest day of the year um, tomorrow and i hope everybody is doing well and is healthy and is um, taking good care of yourselves uh, can you hear me all right yeah okay so um as we begin here, I would like to congratulate everybody on your determination uh, to deepen your lives by way of this ancient practice, which is a demanding practice. It requires commitment and constancy. And, um, and we, in it confirm our resolve uh, to use this practice well over time and the vow to practice continually in our ordinary lives as the Buddha continued in his ordinary life, uh, living according to his karmic circumstances and the circumstances of his heritage and his birth, just as we all do. Um, we, we did this um, Rohatsu Sashin on the Buddha's life. A few of you were there for that. And it it's very striking when we uh, depart from the mythic telling and consider the life of this ordinary human being who he was, it's one of the things that's unique about him as the head of a world religion or spiritual path really. And he came into his practice through the circumstances of his own uh, dissatisfaction with kind of a perfect material existence with a lot of love and everything he could desire right there. And yet he still experienced such persistent dissatisfaction um, that he, he had to um, leave that all behind and engage in a, uh, a full on inquiry that transformed his life. And actually this practice transforms our life over time without probably going to qu quite the same lengths that he did, but it requires the same kind of openness to take a very clear look at what we take for granted as who we are and what our life is. Um, before I, I go on with this, um, this talk about the Buddha's first steps. Um, I'd like to invite everybody before you go to bed tonight to light a candle, if you haven't already today, and uh, to express and affirm your commitment to this life of steady practice and bright awareness. And even if the mind in practice does not always seem bright, that's okay, because the mind is not always bright. There's endless variability in this life. It's part of the, one of the marks of existence is the variability. Um, but the vow to awaken carries us through thick and thin, really. And faith in the way carries us participating in all the activities of our life is the path of awakening, uh, awakening the Buddha mind, which is the very ordinary mind. And yet there's more to be seen in the present moment. So we're, we look deeply into the mind of the present moment, the mind of interdependence, of impermanence and no self. So using the uh, birth of the Buddha as a jumping off point for considering our own first steps, 
Uh, let's let's refer back to our own very first moment of life. Have you thought about your the first moment of your life very much? I just think, isn't it interesting that the life is so all important and yet we may not, unless we have a particular story about the moment of our birth that was given to us, we may not actually have considered what that first moment was. Uh, the small human organism awash with new sensation at the moment of emergence, having no thought, just sensation, maybe coldness, or maybe the harshness of sound. Um, at birth, awareness is wholly physical, wholly physical. We are entirely physically born with no knowing. And at birth, at any birth, there is accompaniment. Uh, when the Buddha was born, he was born in the garden of Lumbini among the solitaries. And he emerged from one oneness into the condition of being separate from one to two. And with him was the noble queen, Maya, birth mother of the Buddha and her entourage were all there. They were all really there, intensely there during the birth. The birth was happening to all of them. Um, there, was no, there was no one who's kind of having something else going on. And so um, the moments uh, the moments of every single person was filled with the event, the birth of this lovely child. And you were a lovely child. Just look at you now. <laughs> so where does the separation of consciousness begin? Was there separation of consciousness then and, and is there now? Uh, when we awaken to this moment, we see that we're always in company. We're always accompanied by Sangha when we meditate together uh, or by the people, the animals, the plants and the things that surround us in our environment which all together accompany us in this moment and all in their own center experience this moment the to the sentient. I don't know if the, if the desk or the books or the chair experience, but they serve and they certainly are an intimate part of this moment. So picture the queen as she takes hold of the solid tree that offers its branch to steady her during the birthing process. And that's part of the myth is that at the moment of the birth, the tree reached down and loaned a branch for her to hold as she stood in her birthing. And the tale as a myth makes it sound like it's easy to birth. Uh, it says that she rested Underneath one of the solid trees, her birth began and a baby boy was born. Just like that. <laughs> and yes, when we are aligned with our circumstances and allow them to assist us, what happens, uh, what wants to happen happens without anything else. It happens on its own. That's part of what this story is, is demonstrating. The story of birth that we think of a birth of a baby, but any birth moment by moment has these characteristics actually, if we're looking closely. Sometimes what, we, uh, what wants to happen requires uh, labor. 
great labor. And yet there is assistance there. So from Queen Maya's great effort, from the great labor of all of our mothers, of all universal energy concentrated and energy is tremendously concentrated in birthing. Uh, life comes forth. Life in that way longs for itself, longs to be expressed. This moment wants to be expressed. And there can be the expression of a moment without us realizing it. Or there can be the expression of this moment when we fully realize it. And those are the moments that we remember when we are fully present in the expression of a moment. During labor, nothing else is going on, just the laboring. No room for attention to stray. And all who gathered in the garden at Lumbini helped in the bird at Buddha's birth. No one was uninvolved. The trees, the earth, the flowers, the birds, the attendants, and Queen Maya gave 100% to the birth of this precious life. That's the kind of 100% uh, that we are encouraged to bring to our meditation. And that's the kind of 100% that we can bring to our life, all in interested, connected. So we're instructed to approach our practice of the present moment as a baby Buddha, to pay close attention uh, in the birth of this moment, each moment, and each step in our life, that kind of close attention not strained, not extra, not, not putting on a show of attention, but just the simplicity of being present and open. Because what we say when we say present is open, you're open. Just the way we are when we hold a newborn. Uh, it's pretty simple because it's just inherently so remarkable whether it's a human baby or a kitten or a puppy or a newt. The other day there was a newt right in the track where the bicycles come by. So I picked its little pudgy belly up and took it off the trail. And you know, the whole of my life was in the sensation of that little newt in my hands. And you know that, you have those experiences I'm sure all the time where something you do just completely fills the moment. And with the baby, we hold them not only in our arms, but we hold them in our heart with all of our senses, full of curious looking, taking them in. We take in our moments. And of course, I'm, I'm bringing this up tonight one, because we're heading into Christmas week, which is the birth of the babe, the baby Jesus, which is the same birth. It is the same story. It's our human presence, the newness of life, the preciousness of life, the mystery. All about this birth holy life, holy night, sacred and miraculous. And the myth of the Buddha's birth is also a virgin tale, oddly enough. Uh, in a dream, just before she conceives, she, she dreams that she's visited by a white elephant with six tusks who enters through her side and when she awakens, she knows she's going to bear a child. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Similar, but it, it's really the story 
of not the ordinary birth, but the miracle of birth, miraculous birth. Where does new life come from? Where is the beginning of this moment? Where does this moment come from? The origins. This is the kind of the, the, the uh, approach that a child's mind takes to life, <laughs> really fresh for the first time encountering, doesn't yet know. And, but by the time we get to be adults, uh, we know so much about how the world is that we've narrowed so significantly that we no longer notice the miraculous display that makes up our life. In Tibetan Buddhist teachings, they often use the word display. And actually it, it, really, uh, it really is a great description of the world, the, the moment on display, look around you, this is the display, including this very strange situation we're all sharing here on the Zoom screen, this is, weird. <laughs> this is beyond Disney, <laughs> the Disney of our youth. Um, and the thing is that everything comes together, comes forward together every moment, all together with no gaps, nothing, no, no spaces in between. Everything works together. All things work together. You may have noticed that in your own life. It's just remarkable how things coordinate. And it takes a lot of determination, which we call great determination to open once again to the way of not knowing. And that's really what we're doing in this uh, Zen practice, sitting and not knowing, sitting without the mind that knows. Uh, and, and the mind that does not know is awareness itself. Sitting in the body is the original body, newly emerging. I mean, think of it as a, as a baby, when you're emerging from the womb, the sensations of the body suddenly become really brightened by the complete change of environment and the struggle that, um, that happens when you make your way because you have to down through the birth canal, you gotta get out. It's time, everything is moving you out. And that happens in our life too. Everything moves us along. Look at what happens in the aging process. Everything is working together to move us along. So this, um, the, the moment of birth is a moment of only proprioception, only kinesthetic. Well, we say that uh, Zazen is a body practice when we really take that seriously, that changes our zazen a lot because it's so easy to fall into just that it's a thinking or it's a dreaming, but to really uh, become fully attuned to the entirety of the body uh, is part of settling into presence. Body and mind present together, no separation. And um, birthing, as it's told in the myth of the Buddha's birth, sounds like a snap. But birthing is pretty intense. And um, the natural process of bringing forth something quite new can also be quite intense. When a new life emerges, all of our attention, not one part is held back. All is illuminated. 
And that's the possibility in our Zazen. And we can have all kinds of crises, just as in birth. Birth is a bit of a crisis. As our practice deepens and we confront and remember and experience anything that we had excluded from awareness up until that time comes forward in the silence and the stillness. The, the body holds our life history in its fibers. Muscles remember. And so uh, due to this, uh, we can, when we do long, intense meditation, a lot of things come up that we ordinarily don't, uh, don't need to deal with or don't remember or are not aware of. Our whole life, when we give our whole life over to the Buddha way, uh, and our whole life comes forward in the garden of the present moment, we never know what we're going to become aware of, but the, the self habit becomes illuminated when the mind quiets way down. And we really come to realize the self as it constitutes, as it uh, attempt, as it resists a certain experience not even necessarily during Zazen, but once we, we have a long practice, and many of you do have had a long practice, you notice when you are not willing to um, allow <laughs> and um, experience whatever's going on. So when we've reached adulthood, uh, conventionally, we think that we've, uh, you know, we, we have all of our vocational stuff together, we have our finances together in, to the extent that we are going to. Relationships, personal habits are all long held. The way we, we uh, use our bodies, the way we think, the way we talk, and we think we're complete, which is absurd actually. Awakening continues if we embrace it as our moment to moment path. As we're willing to be awake, awakening continues. If we don't embrace our path, we can sink deeper and deeper into habit, narrowing the path as we go. If we do continue to practice, the path seems to bro become bro broader and broader and broader as we go. So if we close off our mind and fixate attention on what we know already, we can't, we can't notice or integrate anything fresh or unaccounted for or um, unknowable mystery. So on the one hand, each moment is complete. There's nothing left out of any moment. If, if I look anywhere else, I miss what's right here. But if I'm enclosed in habitual perception, in my usual ways of noticing, then I won't be able to notice anything new, anything subtle or unexpected. So just a, just a, a little um, example of this, which just was amazing. I was thinking about this talk when I was out for a walk yesterday. And, um, and so I stopped on the path and I thought, okay, so just see, just stop. You, you figure you know where you are and what's going on because you've been here a million times. Just take a look and see if there's anything you notice that you've never noticed before. And lo and behold, what I noticed was the whole side of the road was covered with um, Queen Anne's lace when it's all dried up and curled back up in itself and brown on long stalks. And every single stalk was moving ever so slightly. And as I, as, as I panned out my visual field, I saw there's this all alongside this path, everything was moving just very slightly. And then 
I, I just never seen that before. I always notice when it's windy, but, or, you know, the tips of, of cedars, sometimes you can see them moving very slowly, slightly, but everything was moving very slightly all the way along the path. It was really quite, quite amazing. <laughs> so that doesn't seem like a big deal, but to me, it was very rich, very rich. The delight of noticing something in the ordinary, every day where you've always been, something you never noticed before. So we can contemplate this moment as birth for ourselves as we, as we um, encounter the next moment and the next step. And notice how open you are or not no judgment, but just noticing is really the practice all the time of being present. So maybe you, may you all enjoy this open presence practice as we go forward in these dark days. And um, I hope that you have a chance to notice all kinds of things you've never noticed before. Thank you.